96 Liverpool fans died on the terraces at the Sheffield ground during that fated FA Cup semi-final tie between Liverpool and Nottingham Forest. We're going to take an extended look now at the terrible events which unfolded as BBC Radio 2 hosted its Saturday afternoon sports programme. Now it's half past one and time to join John Inverdale for this afternoon's Sport on Two. Liverpool against Nottingham Forest and Everton against Norwich. It's FA Cup semi-final day. One, two and three. Zayani Luna move a That's the Greenham Stakes. One more to come from Newbury. That's the 3.30, the John Porter Stakes over a mile and a half. We must go now to Hillsborough, what, we, what looks anyway to be a major incident there. Peter Jones. The teams have just left the field here, taken away by referee Ray Lewis. The trouble away to our left, where there's a packed enclosure of Liverpool supporters. Two and a half minutes after the match started, they really came over the top of the fence. Away to the left at the moment, there must be some one or two hundred people on the pitch. They're 20 yards onto the pitch. I see people lying Don't down. like it. At the moment, Rangers nil, St. Johnson nil. Problems mount by the minute at Hillsborough. Let's go back there and rejoin Peter Jones. The situation now seems to be becoming a lot more serious. An ambulance has just come into the stadium and is making its way through a vast crowd of people away to the left. There would seem to be, from where I'm sitting here, dozens of people now lying on the ground and being attended to by police and St John's ambulance. I saw two oxygen cylinders being carried down the touchline just below us minutes ago. You may be able to hear the siren of the ambulance away to the left, but the trouble is the ambulance can't get through the crowd. And the ambulance is really inching forward, trying very, very hard to get through. But again, as I'm watching, there are police climbing up on the fence, pleading with people not to come forward. Some of the people at the back, understandably, through sheer fear, are trying to climb their way up into the upper tier once more. And the ambulance is still trying to get through. It's behind the goal mouth to our left. We hope to be describing a classic for you. It's far from it at the moment. It looks very serious. Here at the recreation ground, Bath lead for Nathalie by nine points to six. Back at the wreck later in the afternoon. We must go back to Hillsborough, those scenes of crowd problems there. Liverpool against Nottingham Forest. The game almost, well, superfluous to what's going on there at the moment. Peter Jones. Yes, superfluous is the word because the crowd scenes are still very, very ugly indeed. I've now seen 15 stretchers carrying bodies away. Alive, I must stress. And at the moment, they've been ripping up some advertising boards because they've run out of stretchers. And they're being used at the moment to take people away. Away to the left, the corner flag. I see for the last 10 minutes, a nurse has what I think been giving a kiss of life to one, uh, one young fan who looks in deep distress. Uh, there must be at least another 20 or 30 lying on the ground calling for assistance. About three minutes ago, some 200 more police marched into the stadium. Now, it looks like a battlefield rather than anything else. A second ambulance has just come in away to the right and is now trying to back onto the pitch I would stress yet again what I said earlier to you everything but score and who knows maybe they'll do that in the second half Rangers nil St Johnson nil let's go out to Hillsborough then all policemen and ambulances and scenes of terrible mayhem at Hillsborough Peter Jones at the moment there are unconfirmed reports and I stress unconfirmed reports of five dead and many seriously injured here at Hillsborough just to remind you what happened after five minutes, one end of the ground to our left, where the Liverpool game will be abandoned this afternoon at Hillsborough. I've also heard reports that both Brian Clough and Kenny Dalglish, the respective managers, want to, in fact, talk to the crowd. Kenny Dalglish, I'll tell you, looking very, very distressed indeed, as one can remember. And I'm now check taking you from my position up here uh, in the commentary stand and taking you down to the dressing room area, waiting my colleague, Alan Green. Alongside me, I've got Dr. Glyn Phillips, who is a Liverpool fan, but he's a GP in East Kilbride in Scotland. He came here to watch a match, and you've watched the tragedy. Absolutely. Um, it's, it's a sheer mayhem on the pitch, or it was about a quarter of an hour ago. Unfortunately, Liverpool fans are probably going to get stuck with this again, but in that, I was in the middle of what the problem, and there's no doubt that this crowd, crowd was too big for this ground. Liverpool just filled the end they were given. The police allowed the fans to fill the middle terracing section to the point that they were crammed in like sardines, and yet the two outside portions of the, of the terracing were left virtually empty. Lads were getting crushed against the fence right down by the pitch, and there were so many people in the ground, at that part of the ground, that nobody could even move to even get out. Now, unfortunately, there's guys who've died down on that pitch. I've seen about eight to 10, I don't know how many there are. There was one chap I went to, he was clinically dead, he had no heartbeat, he was cyanosed, and 
we resuscitated him for about 10 minutes and we were just about to give up when we got his heart beating, but I don't know what the state of his uh, cerebral function is going to be like. We asked for a defibrillator. I've, I've been informed there isn't a defibrillator in the whole ground, which I find appalling for a major event like this. We were given an oxygen tank to help with our resuscitation and it was empty. I think this is an absolute disgrace. Alan Green talking to a general practitioner who was a Liverpool fan watching. His teammates and Everton now try to cross the halfway line. They're looking good. They're leading here 1 0. Back here in the studio, as is always the case with major, major tragedies, as we have at Hillsborough this afternoon, emergency numbers for all those concerned about friends or relatives who they fear may be involved. As we say at the moment, we don't know the extent of the injuries. There are unconfirmed reports of a number of fatalities. If you're concerned about a friend or a relative, the emergency number to call is a Sheffield code. That's 0742 570 800. Let's go back to the ground now and the latest news from Peter Jones. And at last there's a sense of peace here at Hillsborough, if you could use that rather foreign word, because we now have no more than 50 or 60 people on the pitch, most of them are policemen. I must say the supporters have left the ground very peacefully. I think also only in the last 15 minutes did they realise the seriousness of the situation. The match has been abandoned, as we reported to you, and there will be no news of where it will be played and when it will be played until after this weekend. We still have to wait the official figures of fatalities or of the seriously injured. And when you were talking, John, about the emergency telephone number, a few minutes ago, a young Liverpool supporter climbed up the steps towards us and said, please, can I use your telephone? He's pale and he's crying, and he wants to ring his mother, and of course he can, of course he can. Listening to National Radio 2, the time now, 5 o'clock, and good evening, you're listening to Sports Report on National Radio 2. My name's John Inverdale, and this is a tragic day for sport. It's thought that around 50 fans have been crushed to death at Hillsborough, where Liverpool and Nottingham Forest were playing their FA Cup semi-final. It appears that... And pushed, the crush getting worse towards the front, and about five five, six feet from the front. After luckily I'd uh, escaped a couple of the barriers. With, with the crush you can't escape the barriers. You just push either past them or through them. Then there was somebody down on the floor. There was one person down on the floor. People were screaming there was somebody down on the floor. The crush didn't stop. They were screaming for them to rip the fence down or do something. Because people were clambering over the fence by this time. Uh, but it just seems like forever, nothing seems to be happening. And people's arms, these two people's arms that were on the floor were just coming up, you know, grasping for life, literally, and uh, you just couldn't do anything because you, be, you, you were still being crushed yourself, but you were trying to haul them up. And, uh, and then th there was a space, and th th these two people were just lying there. One of them, the youngest lad of the two, he looked like a middle-aged fella to me, or... And a, yeah, and a younger fella, about in his 20s. We were both on the floor, they were, they were mottled, they were going blue. And I tried to resusc resuscitate them the best way they could, you know. I'm, uh, it, was only, it was only after I'd been there a, a while trying to do this that the fences started being ripped down and then they were, they were making space and taking people out. It just seemed like forever that nothing was being done. A quite horrifying report there from an eyewitness at Hillsborough this afternoon. Let's go back to the ground now and get the latest situation from Peter Jones. Well, I think the biggest irony is that the sun is shining now and Hillsborough's quiet and over there to the left, the green Yorkshire Hills. And who would have known that 74 people would die here in the stadium this afternoon? I don't necessarily want to reflect on Heisel, but I was there that night broadcasting with Emlyn Hughes and he was sitting behind me this afternoon. And after half an hour of watching stretchers going out and oxygen cylinders being brought in and ambulance sirens screaming, he touched me on the shoulder and he said, I can't take any more and Hemlin Hughes left. And two other items I just think of sitting here now in the sunshine. Two items, one that still reminds me of Heisel. The gymnasium here at Hillsborough is being used as a mortuary for the dead. And at this moment, stewards, just as they did at the Heisel Stadium, have got cartons and little paper bags and they're gathering up the personal belongings of the spectators, some of whom died, some of whom are now seriously injured in nearby hospitals and the red and white scarves of Liverpool, and red and white bobble hats of Liverpool, and red and white rosettes of Liverpool, and nothing else out there on the enclosure where all the deaths occurred, and the sun shines now.